Hello, everyone, and welcome to SCORE Fairfield County's live webinar on practical technology tips to keep your small business running efficiently and safely. I'm Bob Hogan, the webinar coordinator and a business mentor here at SCORE Fairfield County. I'll be your host today, and our presenter is Bud Freund. More on Bud in just a minute, but first, some brief information on SCORE. SCORE is a nonprofit national partner of the SBA, and locally here at SCORE Fairfield County, we have over 130 volunteers with a wide range of industry process and subject matter expertise. And we offer three primary value added services to small business owners. First of all, we offer free one on one counseling, which can be by face to face, but in today's times by video, uh, telephone or email. And you can do that by clicking on the bit.ly link you see on the screen, or you can go to our website and hit the request a mentor link at fairfieldcounty.score.org. Second, secondly, we offer a wide range of educational workshops and webinars like the one today, about 150 throughout the year. And lastly, we offer extensive resources on our website, including access to subject matter experts. Our next live webinar is tomorrow, Wednesday, December 16th at noon. And the topic is do what works and get unstuck from your biggest business problem with John Barr presenting. You can find more specifics on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org. When you're on our website, you'll also be able to um, find a large number of archived webinars, which you can access on demand uh, at any time. Uh, just some useful information about uh, today's webinar. We have set aside time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation. So if you have a question, please use the chat window at the bottom of your screen. You can just hover on the bottom and you'll see a chat icon. If you click on that, you can type your question in at any time during the webinar and Bud will answer it at the end. Uh, we will end our webinar sharply at one o'clock to respect your time. The session is being recorded and the link to the recording will be available within the next couple of days on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker today. Uh, Bud Freund has been self-employed for 40 years and he has been providing IT solutions to homes and small businesses for over 20 years. He currently teaches technology life skills at King and manages the Bicultural Hebrew Academy Network. As a certified SCORE mentor, he regularly presents technology webinars and workshops throughout Fairfield County. Bud, it's all yours. Thank you, Bob, and thank you all for joining us. Glad you could be here. We're going to be talking about a bunch of different topics. Oh, why isn't my thing moving forward? But there we are. The, the first thing that I wanted to make mention of is the fact that things are very unusual right now and people have been commenting about it for quite a while. So just sort of get your head in the game on that. And before we go too much farther, I wanted to bring up one topic which comes up very regularly, especially today since the European Union has just put in place a, a new data law, data privacy law. Um, there is a very big difference between copyright and fair use, and I wanted to provide something that would be um, not so much legal, but uh, good insight. So I asked my friend Cliff Enico to tell me the difference between the two. Here's what he said. People rarely get annoyed if you reference and link to them, especially if you present them in a positive light. That's basically free marketing for them. If you reference and link to them in a way that presents them in a negative light, look at this idiot dot dot dot. They will send you a nasty letter threatening to sue you if you don't remove the link. If you are bigger, if they are bigger and more powerful than you, you should do that. If you are using other people's content for money without their permission or claiming it is your original content, that's copyright infringement and you can be sued for that too. So just wanted to do that as you think about things to put on your website. Uh, the next item I wanted to just make a brief mention of is most people know Einstein's theory of relativity. This is his theory of simplicity. So uh, in many cases, the question you may ask along the way will be answered in a later slide. So uh, let me go through this and I'm very happy as Bob said to answer questions at the end. Now, I want you to think about these computers, tablets, smartphones, all of these devices as 
the everything thing. And they really are. They're communication, written, visual, verbal. They're billing, banking, investing, recreation, research, shopping, education, and of course, binge watching cats on YouTube for whatever inexplicable reason you can come up with. So the care and feeding of these machines is really, really important and we'll go into greater detail. But the first thing I wanted to tell you about are bitlies. Bob had mentioned a bitly, there's one at the top of this screen. You have absolutely no idea of where that link will take you or what it will do to your computer. So directly underneath it, is a link where you can type in a bit.ly and see where it will go. I would deconstruct before I click. Second item that's important to note are these little squiggly dots called QR codes, which again, you don't know where they're going to take you or what they're going to do, unless of course, Home Depot has put a whole slew of them up there and as Cliff Enico implied, if something went wrong, you would sue them in a heartbeat. So they're very careful about their QR codes. But if you see one randomly, proceed with caution. Now, one of the items I talk about very regularly is the fact that we have these computers and they are our connection to the whole world. And these days they are our business. So whether it's the old computer, your tablet, your smartphone, Think about how you would do those four bullets in the event that the computer that you rely on for a daily basis were to stop working and understand that if you come up with that, you are a leg up on Sony who got hacked many several years ago by the North Koreans and had absolutely no clue as to what to do. So, First major topic I want to cover is going to be how to keep yourself, yourself very safe. And the, the first area I want to chat about is, is this notion of information, which we're gathering at a massive speed right now. If my math is correct, on television alone, there are close to 20 million minutes of information yearly. And that's before you get to the one and a half billion websites. And that 5.6 billion web pages is grossly underrated because websites like Amazon and Google are database driven, which in English means that they're pulling out of buckets and can mix and match ad infinitum. So this information that you're gathering can be both useful and controversial. So in the discussion of your business or the people that you do business with, you may want to proceed cautiously with the information and the opinions about the information that you have and that you share. So here's the first punch list we're gonna work our way through and most of these are PC based. Um, that super anti-spyware, which is a really silly name, have, these are, and these are all by the way, free unless otherwise indicated, super anti-spyware will clean out your registry and look for um, ad aware and other things that get brought onto your computer without your knowledge, just because they're sitting on a web page, whether it's a Facebook pixel or some other cockamamie thing that's going to track where you go and what you do, super anti-spyware will remove that. Malware bytes is becoming harder and harder to be free, but again, it will look for garbage similar, but in some cases different garbage than super anti-spyware. And these are things I run manually and I run maybe once, twice a month. It's the last thing I do before I go to sleep or before I'm done for the day. In the world of antivirus, if you are a home user, and I will say that again, a home user, Bitdefender offers a free product and it is wonderful. It was written up twice during the Consumer Electronics Show, I believe two years ago from the New York Times. Uh, the work that they do in the way of antivirus is that there's a tiny little proxy on your computer 
and the bulk of the work is being done online at a Bitdefender server. So your machine runs faster. AVG is on both Mac and PC. They do offer free versions. Avast, I've only seen on PC. Correct me when I'm wrong, throw it in the chat. It, there's too much stuff for any one person to know. Viper, if you are going to pay for antivirus, is a fabulous piece of software. They're very reliable. They've been around a long time and um, they, they do a really good job. But again, it is a paid service and it is both PC and Mac based. Most importantly, the most important thing that you can do for your computer, tablet or smartphone is to update because there are 80,000 doors into and out of a computer. And the only way to plug them up is to be reactive because if you closed all the doors, you wouldn't get any work done. So when you see those little dots and lights, do your updates, folks. They're really important, both for making things run more efficiently and also for making your machines safer. Now, a word about passwords, because we all live by them. If you lock the door of your house, if you lock your car, lock your data. That's your password. It makes things safer. And I am a very big believer in what is called the LEET language, short for elite. And it's basically transposing letters or characters, symbols, uh, uh, if into words, They're translating letters into numbers uh, and symbols. So a um, couple of examples up on top. Um, I don't think you need to get really carried away that cap H in anti-disestablishmentarianism has caught me for years. Um, a truly bulletproof password as I've read in a couple of places, person, place, thing. That's the three, the three words at the bottom. And most importantly, it is a really good idea to write them down. I am a big believer in the philosophy of hiding in plain sight. And I have told many, many people to create, whether it's on their phone or it's on their computer, create a, a, a file, whether it's Word or Excel, doesn't matter. But call it birthdays and anniversaries, guest list, shopping list, anything but this is where I keep all of my secret passwords. That's a really bad name for the file that's gonna hide stuff. Hide in plain sight, don't let people see the obvious. Now, 500 years before Christ was born, a Chinese general named Sun Tzu wrote a book called The Art of War. And I rarely read my screens because I tend to believe that if you could fill out the registration to be here, you can read it yourself. But this is just one of my favorites because 500 years ago, he wrote, keep your friends close, your enemies closer, your mobile devices even closer than that, and your passwords as close as humanly possible without avoiding, with, with avoiding a human, a physical discomfort. Now, he might not have written the stuff in yellow, but you, you get the general idea. Um, somebody's commenting on getting a Mac, and uh, if you do your homework, you can get corrupted on a Mac and you can get hacked there now too. Not so much on the iPhone and the iPad because they keep a really clean sandbox there, but Macintosh in Java hacks, look it up. Now, those of you who are following the newspapers these days, um, even our federal government, who in theory should be taking care of themselves, are getting hacked. And it gets down to even the crazy carrying a USB to try and corrupt something at Mar-a-Lago. So you've, if you have employees, it is important to think about which of those employees has the keys to your kingdom. Can they get into your QuickBooks? Can they get to your client list? Do they have access to your bank accounts? And who can do that? And do you have a strategy in the event that something goes south? So how do you lock people out? Do you know where to go and what to close? 
that would be a really good idea for that birthdays and anniversaries spreadsheet. And it happens everywhere. And you'll see in a little while that a lot of it is coming through email. And if you think about um, being a parent and in today's scheme of things, you've got one child tugging on your left leg and the other one's tugging on your right and you're trying to get work done. And in all of it, you click on a wrong item because you're rushing and the next thing you know, um, you, you've got a major problem. Uh, 2020, the focus by the FBI, they believed was home use. I would suggest to you that will continue into 2021. Um, if you think of yourself as low hanging fruit, those people who don't have antivirus on their computers, they don't have a firewall in their router, which is very rare these days, but try to be cautious, go slow. It'll be worth it in the long run. And the other thing to bear in mind these days is that people who are doing these hacks are at home just like you and have plenty of time to do homework to find out the names or the email addresses of those people to target in their emails. Nothing far-fetched about this anymore, unfortunately. So I've done this for a few different groups. And again, we are providing massive amounts of information to people that we didn't even realize were getting it. Antitrust lawsuits against Facebook and Google were just presented either late last month or early this month. It's too hard to follow all this stuff. So that bitly up top is by an article from the Washington Post by a fellow named Jeffrey Fowler. Put simply, he writes it, I read it. And he's just that good. And that article is talking about how you can get Facebook to stop following you. And that screen is where you turn off the Facebook tracking. It's all described in the article. The other place you wanna shut down is at Google. If you've got a Gmail account and you haven't turned things off, they're gonna follow you and watch everything you do. And that really sad computer there, don't worry about Google. They may be sad to lose you, but they've probably got a billion other people that they can track. So myactivity.google.com and start closing things down and get your privacy back for yourself. It will also turn off what activity you're doing. It will turn off your YouTube tracking. Very important place to go to get your privacy back online. The third place to go to is aboutads.info, where you want to go to the consumer choice page under the consumers tab, where if you go there, you will be able to turn off the advertising of 134 legitimate advertisers. The pop-up windows go away when you go into um, pages on the web, there will be fewer and fewer ads because you have blocked them. So if you're using Gmail without a G Suite account or you're in Live or you're in Yahoo, um, these are free services that are going to provide less um, safety than a service like Microsoft hosted Exchange or a service you might invest in like G Suite. So I urge you to invest in your business. Have I mentioned this phrase before? I'm going to do it a couple of more times, I think. And that's why We've, we're all at home. People who want to get into your business and your information know it, and they are it, poking at it like nobody's business. And when 91% of hacks are starting with email, we know where the target comes from and why it's important to be careful. A few quick examples, which I've used many, many times. Um, that Microsoft activity, there's no Microsoft logo. There's no um, information that, that would be recognizable as Microsoft. 
making that click a really bad problem. And my one of my all time favorites, I know for a fact that FedEx does not need to use support at dentistelmhurstny.com as their email address because they've got FedEx. So protection for the people that you communicate with. Use BCC, the blind carbon copy. You don't share everybody's email address because when you hit reply all, you just put more people at risk for phishing and scams and you know what. And this is my new favorite. Um, Christopher Ray is the uh, head of the FBI and he sent to me personally from his Polish email service and a note to tell me that there's one and a half million dollars waiting for me if I go to the only Western Union post office in California. And again, I send Betsy Holden a note to a Gmail account. This is the stuff to put in the garbage. Please put the, read it and put it in the garbage. Get a chuckle, use it as an example, but don't reply. And as mentioned, there are many subscriptions now which are really useful to use for several reasons. First of all, they keep software up to date. And secondly, uh, as new things get changed and, and doors need to get locked, there's 80,000 doors. If you're in a subscription, Microsoft is working on locking them for you. So let's go through some of the list. The first one, of course, is Office 365, which for $100 a year will give you five licenses for five different computers. You can have Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook on five different machines and a terabyte of online storage. Now, I will caution by saying that online storage is not necessarily a backup. It is access. You can access from your phone, your tablet, your desktop, your laptop. But if one of those gets corrupted, the corruption can very probably travel back into OneDrive. If it is a paid service and Microsoft does offer OneDrive as a free service, but if it is a paid service, there are some degree of backups. I do not consider OneDrive to be a backup. Adobe's Creative Cloud, depending upon whether you do photography, graphic design, um, absolutely essential in today's world of communication between Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, um, the, the list is, is really long, Premiere for video. The, these are, are software packages which can either be purchased in bulk annually or in smaller, um, Photoshop and Lightroom kind of, of a package. I am a huge fan of Evernote. Evernote will give you 60 megabytes free per month. And the Bible, just as a reference point, is about 1.7 megabytes. Can't fit on a floppy disk, but if 1.7 megabytes is the Bible and Evernote is giving you 60 megabytes per month. If you can fill 60 megabytes of writing, you are prolific. Annually, they charge, I believe, $60 a year, and they go up to, I believe, a gigabyte of data, and it's stored. And one of the features that I pay for, as you've seen going through here, I do a lot of web clipping and using Evernote is one of the easiest ways that I do it. Also with 365, before I forget, is another piece of software called OneNote. OneNote is comparable to Evernote only in the wonderful world of Microsoft. G Suite as a paid service, they provide support. You can get better than it's on our website as an answer for some help. G Suite will also provide you with equivalents to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, so you can do your, your documents, your spreadsheets, and your presentations. Um, when it comes to email, 
I am a huge fan of Microsoft hosted exchange. It is worth every penny to invest in email because the people who do that for you will uh, put on spam filters, they will whitelist and blacklist. If you have a problem with a device, you reconnect to your email online and it all comes back down. Also, the law of email clearly states, if you absolutely positively must get your hands on an email, unless you are using hosted exchange, it will not be on the device that you're touching. Another list. Portable Apps and Liber Liberkey are two websites that are literally a treasure trove of free software. And in both cases, the downloads can either install onto your computer or you can install them onto a thumb drive to travel with you. So you could travel with a browser, you could travel with a version of LibreOffice, which is the equivalent to 365, more to come on that. Um, but both of these places have done a fabulous job of um, slicing and dicing so that you can find things and um, they will put a small app onto your computer to let you know that there are updates available. Here's the longer list. Um, from portable apps, the three biggies that I, I basically live by are PicPic, which is a wonderful PC-based screenshot where you can select an area, select a screen. If you've got dual monitors, it'll take both screens save it in multiple formats, do markups on it. Toucan, a wonderful piece of software for copying. Microsoft will give you 80 characters for a file name. However, if you use Microsoft to copy from say a hard drive to an external hard drive, it tends to hiccup every now and then, it just does. Toucan is a really solid pipe for doing that copying. And it will make sure that you can retain the timestamps. I wrote this letter three years ago. I don't want the date changed. It's got a very long name and it's got a couple of weird characters. Toucan can cover that. VLC, a free video player. Liberkey, I just mentioned. Browsers, and we'll cover a little bit more about that in a little while, but Microsoft Edge is uh, slowly becoming a very uh, wonderful replacement to Explorer. There are some add-ins. They do ask you to uh, create an account, your Microsoft account. So there is some tracking that's being done, but it does seem to work on the wide majority of web pages and it's not tracking you as seriously for advertising as Chrome does. Firefox, I love the add-ins in Firefox. There's Forecast Fox to tell you the weather, colorful tabs, Fox clocks. Um, the, the list is, is incredibly long, but those are three that I use on a very regular basis. And Brave, if you haven't downloaded Brave, I would strongly recommend it. Um, Brave is a privacy browser. They don't track what you do and they very proudly tell you that on their website, brave.com. Their primary browser uh, uh, search engine is DuckDuckGo, which also does not track you. So it's, it's a private browser, one thing to bear in mind, as you do your install on Brave, it can pull all of your favorites from Chrome or Firefox or Edge, and it will do a bunch of setups for you, including the DuckDuckGo search engine. And at the very end, they have some sort of Brave point system. Do not take the Brave point system because Brave points are Brave tracking you. So just something to bear in mind. LibreOffice, I mentioned OpenOffice is an alternative to Microsoft Office. It will work on both Mac and PC. Keynote pages and numbers, while they're not exactly free, 
If you buy a Mac, it just comes with it. So you're not buying additional software. And Google, which you can use online between Sheets, Docs, and Slides, and a host of other apps that they've created, they work. They work really well. So if you're not looking to spend money on these software packages, there are alternatives. And the last one I want to make mention of is paint.net. And I'm showing the icon because it's very easy to get confused. My understanding is that paint.net is a Microsoft product and it's basically Photoshop Lite. It will allow you to retouch, resize, do a few of the, the, uh, the basics that Photoshop does, corrections to an image, and it's free. Um, I'd mentioned super anti-spyware before. Uh, do not get to the point where you've got 69,500 items to remove. All right. I want to go through a mobile checklist because there are, we're, we're all on them and there's a number of items that are really good now. Jumbo was written up about a year ago in the New York Times. You have to give them your username and password for Facebook and I believe Twitter, and it will basically walk through and lock down your privacy settings. And then it will send you notifications if there are issues or errors. Um, I've been using it and, and I've had no problem. Uh, the giving away of usernames and passwords, everybody does differently. Dropbox is now a better product as a paid service than free. As a free service, you are only allowed two devices. As a paid service, you can have more than that. I live in Evernote. I've already spent enough time on it. If you're not using Zoom, you're not here. I'm a big fan of Google News and Weather. Uh, again, it's on both platforms. However, on the Android side, to my eye, it shows better than on the Apple side. Whereas if you look at the bottom of this list, smart news plays better on Apple for my eye than it does on Android. And smart news on a tablet is just a winner. Great news aggregator. WhatsApp, video chat, Amazon. Again, uh, with Amazon, I recommend two-step authentication. Uh, docs to go is an alternative to uh, Microsoft Office on your mobile devices. It is extremely tiny. It does not take up a lot of space, whereas Word, Excel, and PowerPoint each take up about one gigabyte of storage on your phone. That's three gigabytes for three apps. A lot of space. If you're not using Venmo, I'd recommend considering it. Um, once you get in the fold of Venmo, it's really easy to either get paid or pay people. Works really well. Um, your bank app also, if it's on your phone, works really well, but please use two-step authentication. QuickBooks Online, there is a phone app. So basically I can get done with a job, get in my car, open QuickBooks and send a bill. It doesn't get much better than that. Slack for communication. Some people love it. Some people hate it. It's um, a, uh, an alternative to texting. Um, you can create groups. You can have private chats. Um, we use it in SCORE for an, in a number of places. And as I said, some love it, some don't. For those of us who are music fans, Shazam is really good for that song that I can't remember the name of or the artist who did it. Um, I live in the New York Times because if I don't watch the news, I can't tell you what's going on. Um, you can get the New York Times in paper seven days a week. You can get it as Sunday. Um, both the paper and Sunday versions come with digital all access. This is very important. Uh, the New York Times offers basic digital access. You get the newspaper. The Times offers digital all access. 
you get the newspapers, you get the crossword puzzles, you get the New York Times cooking section. And depending upon how much you want to spend and what information you want to get, choose accordingly. The Wall Street Journal, um, they've gotten better on the Android side. They used to be a memory pig and you'd have to regularly delete everything that was accumulating. Um, Waze, if you're not on Waze, uh, I recommend considering it. It is fabulous method of getting around town or going where you need to go. So how do you get from where you are to everything else on the whole planet Earth? We've mentioned Dropbox, we've mentioned Evernote. I mentioned that OneNote is the Evernote equivalent in Microsoft. OneDrive is the Microsoft equivalent to Dropbox. ShareSync is a product of a company called Intermedia. And if you're involved in um, privacy issues, whether it's financial or medical, ShareSync is, is both a, a HIPAA and Sarbox compliant product. Box is as well. Box will allow you to use Word, Excel, and PowerPoint inside of Box. So you get the, the full features of the apps, but you get it in this safe online environment. Google Drive, if my memory is correct, they will give you 15 gigabytes of storage online for free. Um, Chrome Remote is a free piece of software that I have a couple of clients using. And what it allows you to do is travel around with your tablet. And if you need something back on your home computer, if you install Chrome Remote on your computer, Mac or PC, you can be out and about and you can access your computer back at the office or back at home for free. However, bear in mind, it's Google. They are probably watching something. Chrome, we've mentioned a bunch on that. Um, there, there are reasons I use Chrome. I, I use four different browsers that are in that list there. And as you can see, there are uh, a number of different items to uh, consider. One item to add is simple search, which is um, from a publication where what they've done is to bring back the good old days of Google, where if you go through simple search, which becomes an add-on, you will get those top 15 blue highlighted text links without a whole lot of advertising. And it works very nicely. But I find, quite frankly, that DuckDuckGo does about 85% of my searches, and I'm not being tracked. So very important to bear in mind that your business lives and dies on your data. If you're in Windows 10, the free app is File History and it works. Get a dedicated external hard drive. If your hard drive on your computer is one gigabyte, you need a one gigabyte external. If it's two gigabytes, you need a two gigabyte external. And then plug it in and get the backup. Time machine, same sort of thing for Max. Mosey and Carbonite are paid services and they are owned by the same company. And then there's Datto, which is a Norwalk based company, which is the, the Tiffany of backup services. I have had networks corrupted, wiped the machines, gone to Datto, and an image of the machine is pulled back onto the computer and it restores from what's called bare metal. Zero on the computer to Datto has brought your computer back and at the same time, if you have a problem, you can go to a different computer, log into your computer at Datto, continue to do the work that you were doing inside of the Datto image, and what is restored onto your computer will be up to date and current. Ah. 
That's a very long list of places that got hacked in the public school arena. Here's why. Big business. If you could get one email or 500 emails to make you $5 million, it's pretty good idea to A, have a backup and B, be really, really cautious before you click on an email link, please. Now, once upon a time in America, you could buy a musket and you didn't need a background check or a permit. You could buy snake oil and you didn't need clinical trials or FDA approval. And you could crank up your car and chase the chickens around your yard and you didn't need insurance or a driver's license or to go up to the motor vehicle bureau with your child to take a road test. And in each of those cases, the rules, laws, regulations, ordinances, call it whatever you like, changed for the safety and well being of the general public. To buy a computer today, you don't even need cash. You take your pre approved credit card, you go online, and in two days, it will arrive at your doorstep. And as you can see from laws going into effect and laws that are trying to be changed, the question of whether the safety and well being of the general public needs to be a greater consideration. And let me offer an answer to you for that. And this list isn't complete. Now, just like Jeffrey Fowler, this is another fellow. He writes it, I read it. This guy's got more letters after his name than in his name. And this, as you can see, is four years old out of the Washington Post. That was last month. So proceed cautiously, people. Anybody who's ever done a presentation and you've heard, some of you have heard this before, know there are three parts to any presentation. Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them and tell them what you told them. So the ones on the left, that's the wrap up. On the right, I got time. I'm going to add one more item to the backup thing, which is the 3211 backup. Put your data in three different places two different media, one of them off site, one of them offline, three places, your computer, an online service and a thumb drive, two different media, a thumb drive and an online service, one of them off site, the online service like a Datto, a Mosey or a Carbonite, and one of them offline. This is the one that most people don't do and the one that gets everybody caught. After you do time machine, after you do file history, and if you are buying your software, you need to back up the data, the photos, the videos, the music, the documents that you've created. That's what needs to be backed up. And when you're done with your backup, unplug the external device. Because if there is a problem, if there is a problem, your computer may get sick, but that unplugged backup is going to be clean and pristine. And my brother has been saying to many, many years, well, obviously not Thanksgiving this year, but he's been telling my kids for years, don't do anything stupid. So. The time has come to stump the professor. Great, right, thanks, the thanks. Answer? thanks, Bud. That was uh, that was great. Terrific amount of uh, advice and material there. Um, we're going to use the remaining time now for uh, questions and answers, and we'll take as many as we can until one o'clock. 
And just a reminder, if you have a question, you can hover on the bottom of your screen. There'll be a chat box there. Click on the chat and just type your question in and we'll take as many as we can uh, until one o'clock. Um, we'll, we'll start with uh, one, uh, Bud, back when you were uh, talking about protecting your accounts and, and whatnot, there's a question here is, um, how best to protect our online financials, specifically uh, brokerage? And I, I assume that means brokerage accounts. Any? Very simple, two-step authentication. It, it is the most important thing that you can do to protect yourself. And um, everybody does it a little differently, but turn it on at your bank, turn it on at your, your brokerage house, uh, Amazon has it now, Google email has it. Two-step authentication is the best thing you can do. Okay, that's, uh, that's terrific. Uh, we have one here from, uh, from Ginny um, that, and she says, if we haven't reduced our privacy settings yet, um, so already many companies have our email addresses, how effective is it now to turn off your recommended privacy settings and the second part of the question, are there pros, maybe like yourself, that can walk us through getting rid of the increasing spam, but adjusting settings in different places? Uh, Com Comcast, so hard to get someone to advise on the phone, told us to send spam emails to this email address, which doesn't work, miss.spam at comcast.net. So um, really all about privacy and spam, if you could maybe um, address those few questions. Okay, uh, there, there's a lot to unpack there. So let me start with um, spam. The, the best way to, to avoid spam is to invest in email. Free email services uh, aren't going to provide you with much protection. Um, Intermedia, which I mentioned earlier, is a service that will um, do Microsoft hosted exchange. You can forward your free emails to the paid service. And there are lockdowns inside of hosted exchange. There are white lists and there are black lists. Um, what do you do about the stuff that's already gone out there? The good news is that between laws like the GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation in Europe, this new data law that was unveiled today, and the California Consumer Privacy Act, which uh, still requires you to opt out rather than, rather than opt in. Um, the laws are changing as to what the, the takers of that information uh, are going to be allowed to do. So that's number one on the historic side. Why do it now? Because going forward, um, the laws will be more stringent, but the, the more you can protect the, yourself, the better off you can be. And the other thing that I do a lot is I unsubscribe to a whole lot of things. I am never, ever going to wear anything from Talbot's. I'm not. My, my girls, my family, they might, but go to the bottom of the email, do this on your phone smartphone or your tablet. Go to the bottom of an email and click unsubscribe. I don't recommend doing it from a computer because if there is a, a corruption, a, a problem with, with the unsubscribe, on a computer, greater risk. Apple, as I said earlier, they keep a really clean sandbox. I don't feel great concern in unsubscribing uh, from emails on my smartphone or my iPad. Yeah, that's uh, that's great. Lots, as you say, lots to unpack there. But hopefully, uh, Janie, some of those answers are uh, are very helpful. Um, uh, here's here's one from uh, a question from NG. Um, I use Firefox with DuckDuckGo. Is Brave better? Um, only when you get to the website that doesn't want to play nicely with Firefox. Here, here's the, the end of things that, that needs to be considered. Web designers are getting paid to build a website. And when the web designers know that there are four browsers, web designers get paid by the hour. If you only are allowed four hours to do your work, you need to be sure that the majority of the world is going to get to your website. Microsoft Edge, 
Google Chrome. If you got extra time, you might tinker your website so that Firefox will play nicely in the sandbox, but it's not the, the primary website. So is Firefox better than Brave? Brave is based uh, in my reads on the Chrome engine. They're, they're just not accumulating data. So Brave based on a Chrome engine may play better with more websites, but again, there may be a hiccup, one line of code and, and you're not getting where you wanna go. And on a number of occasions, I've tried to get to some place in Firefox, it just doesn't work. I go to Brave, it just doesn't work. You go to Edge, it's playing, but something looks weird. You go to Chrome and holy cow, look at that. Everything is working fine, just the way it's supposed to. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, Richard's asking, we'll be able to download today's slides. Uh, Richard, uh, the, the session's been recorded and um, will be available on the uh, SCORE FairfieldCounty.org website. And uh, if you replay that, you'll be able to stop it and uh, take down the information and listen to Bud's commentary um, at, at will. But um, I, I don't believe, Bud, that the slides are themselves are, are downloadable. Um, another one uh, from NG, I'm interested in locking down privacy. Some of the apps you've mentioned are less private than others. What do you recommend for best privacy and usability? And uh, a separate question, do you recommend Venmo for business service payments? Would love to use that instead of PayPal. Yes, I recommend Venmo. I, I get paid for business stuff and my kid uses an Uber and reimburses me. Venmo's great. Um, what's best for locking down? Um, everybody's sweet spot for privacy and security is different. And with that said, uh, you got to find a place somewhere between uh, doing absolutely nothing and total paranoia. And um, I thought Jumbo did a really good job of locking things down. Um, if you go through about ads, you go to... Um, myactivity.google.com, uh, go to that Facebook page. The, these are all the, the big player places where you can lock down your information. And as I said, sorry to repeat myself, the, the quantity of lockdown is going to be different for everyone. Um, I happen to like finding out what Stu Leonard's has on sale next week. It's different for everyone. Oh, and one other example I want to mention is that um, this year I saved close to $700 at Stop and Shop because they know I bought milk. So somewhere you got to, it's a give and take. <laughs> okay, that's great. Um, uh, question here on for finances online. Uh, can't the records be hacked even when we are not online, um, on, on, not online on the site? Well, uh, you're, you're, being on, you're being on a website, say, arbitrarily, Merrill Lynch or Chase Bank. Uh, the information you're looking at doesn't live on your computer. It lives on their computers. So the answer is yes. Your information, even when you're not there, can be hacked. Um, that's where you have to hope that people like Chase Bank and Wells Fargo and, and Fidelity and all, all of these people who are required by law to exercise a degree of safety are actually doing the work. Okay, that's uh, helpful. Uh, just a reminder, if, uh, we do have a few more minutes for questions. So if you have any, uh, please type them in. Um, we have a, a question, maybe it's a, it's a comment on uh, uh, regarding Chrome and uh, uh, the, the user here is saying, I thought they were easily hacked. So can you maybe comment on Chrome and hacking? Well, Chrome is a browser and I, I'm not sure that Chrome as a browser is the, the item being hacked. I think the website is being hacked or in the event that you click on something, whether it's on a website or it's in an email that downloads what, whatever package of, of um, software onto your machine that you didn't know, 
that that's where the hack comes from, not the Chrome specific, at least to my understanding of it. You're welcome to send me a nasty gram if I'm wrong. Uh, question from uh, Gigi. Um, I have taken out Google ads and have received a ridiculous amount of spam and phishing as a result. Is there a way to get around taking out ads where you, um, I think it should be, won't be, or where you want to be followed? Well, um, advertising puts you out there. Um, I, I'm not particularly adept at Google ads. Uh, a Jeff Seaver who recently did a, uh, a webinar for us uh, may be better qualified to, to answer on that. Another person who might be better to answer that is Ed Winslow, who's also done webinars for us. Um, when you get into the world of, of advertising online and the, this mysterious thing called a pixel, um, the problem you run into is that um, information is traveling and we, we don't always know exactly what, we don't always know exactly where. And um, unfortunately for the past 20 years or so, give or take, we, we had no idea that this was going on. It, it's kind of like that scene from um, Casablanca where Captain Renault goes, I'm shocked, shocked to learn that there's gambling going on. And lo and behold, these people who have been asking for your email are A, taking the information and B, selling it. So um, it, it's something that we're just starting to come to grips with. Okay. Um, here's actually a, a, a comment that, uh, that might be helpful um, from NG. Um, for the person who asked about financial hacking, apparently you can sign up with Firefox and it will tell you companies that have been hacked where you might have been targeted. It's a bit delayed sometimes, but there is at least, uh, at least this, also an excellent messaging um, alternative. Privacy app is Signal. Yeah, Signal does seem to work very well. It, it's kind of like the old uh, um, Mission Impossible where the, the, uh, the message will self-destruct and you watch the steam coming out of the tape recorder. Same sort of a thing. Um, unfortunately, um, the, the sad reality is that, that if somebody has an ax to grind with you, um, they, they're going to figure out a way to do it. And... Um, even the best of people, and, and you would think that um, the Pentagon and the United States Treasury among and Homeland Security, among other places, um, would have exercised a really high level of caution. And um, the company, if my memory is correct, was Solar Wind. Um, not sure that you want to be advertising the work that you do, or uh, as I've said, hide in plain sight. Um, if you tell people what your password is, somebody may decide to try and do something with it. If you don't tell it to people, they, they may go looking elsewhere for the person who's advertising it. Okay, well, I think um, actually we were out of time and we uh, don't have any more questions. So um, as a reminder, um, this session has been recorded. A few people have asked about the materials. And again, you can um, view this on demand from our website within the next uh, couple of days. And if you're viewing on demand, you can stop it wherever you want and uh, you'll take in a lot of the material that uh, Bud covered there uh, pre pretty quickly. Our next uh, live webinar is tomorrow, uh, Wednesday the 16th at noon. And the topic is do what works and get unstuck from your biggest business problem with John Barb presenting. And again, um, we, if you would like free individual counseling, you can uh, click on the bit.ly link that you see in yellow there on the screen, or you can uh, visit our website and click request a mentor and someone will get back to you. If I could ask you to also fill out your evaluations that are being sent at the end of the webinar, uh, they're tremendously helpful to us. So on behalf of uh, SCORE, I'd like to thank uh, everyone for attending our live webinar today. And a special thank you to Bud Coyne for presenting. So stay well, everyone, and have a great day.